If you understand what's influencing the consumer now, then to an extent you can start thinking, well, what's likely to motivate them? And then from there, well, if you know what's going to motivate them, you can sort of understand how they're likely to behave, what they're likely to want. We need to understand what's influencing those people in order to be able to predict the future, in order to be able to understand what the youngest generation is going to need. And most importantly for the people in this room, how can you appeal to them successfully? What is actually going to appeal to these people? What's the best way of marketing to them? What are the best channels? What are the best rewards you can give them? I'm a futurist, uh, which means I look into the future and try and work out what's going to happen, but I'm a consumer futurist. So my job is to help uh, my clients and everybody from HSBC to Sainsbury's to BBC to MTV to, to understand what their consumers are going to want in the future, what their attitudes are going to be, what their needs are going to be, what their demands are going to be. They want to have control over choice, over purchase choice, over channel choice. They also want to have control over other parts of their lives. Our lives are very... We're not in control of the bigger areas of our lives. We've seen, as global citizens, we've seen things happening economically, politically, socially, technologically. All of this change that is out of our control. We can do nothing about it. Even the greatest economic minds seem incapable of stopping the economic downturn. So how can an individual consumer do anything about that? So because of that, what do they want to do? They want to try and take control of any little bits of their life that they can. It's perfectly understandable. And they're doing that, and they're using technology to do that. Now, this looks like a concert. This is in Seattle. This looks like a concert, a gig, or maybe even a boxing match. But no, this is actually, I don't know if you can see up there in the corner, you see full stadium. These are people at the back gaming, video gaming. Surely video gaming should be the most solitary experience in the world, and yet even video gaming is becoming a communal experience. There is now, I read it yesterday, so it must be true. Uh, I read it in BuzzFeed, definitely must be true. Uh, there is something called a dosage, or a dosage, which is apparently crossed between a donut and a sausage. I know. I think it's important when you're looking into the future to think not just about what the technology is going to be, what the technological trends are, but really what the attitudinal trends are, how consumer attitudes are changing because of the influence that technology is having. So yes, you can enable things for them, you can make sure that everything is mobile on any channel, offer them as much choice as you want. That's fantastic, but that's a hygiene factor for them now. That's just the entrance fee. The only way that you can actually get these people to care about you, yes, you have to enable them, but what you'll, they'll care about to really make the difference is you have to show them that humanity. You have to show them that sense of community. You have to create a brand family. I think the smartphone, not the mobile phone, but the smartphone, the travel computer, the mini computer, that, I think, is the equivalent of the steam engine or the combustion engine. That is literally the most revolutionary device we've, we've had in... 100 years.